Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fourth part of the program organized by Invest Hong Kong Italy, uh, dedicated to the opportunities for Italian startups to open operations and branches, uh, incubating their projects in one of the many structures that Hong Kong makes available to startups from all over the world. And to do so by taking advantage of the incredible and numerous financial support measures that the Hong Kong government makes available for this purpose. Today we will present uh, Brink, a Hong Kong venture capital company that invests in innovative startups by offering incubation programs and support for selecting international companies. Within uh, a few minutes, you will get to know Brink, but above all, you will have the opportunity to understand uh, how, why, and when you should or you could present your projects to Brink to participate in their selection. Most of you followed us along a program uh, through which we explained the reasons why uh, it is important to consider starting a business in Hong Kong. The autonomous region of China, among the most business friendly in the world, thanks to the size of its market, to the synergies that neighboring cities such as Shenzhen and the region of, uh, called the, that we call the Greater Bay Area, uh, thanks to its favorable business climate, moderate tax system, the freedom of movement of capital and goods, freedom of information and freedom of doing business without any government interference. Along the program, we have uh, presented extremely interesting infrastructures such as the Hong Kong Science Technology Park and last week another venture capital company and today Brink we are going to present. Anyone who has missed uh, one of our previous sessions will be able to review the recordings uh, that we have posted on YouTube. Um, so just please send us a request or get in touch with us and we will send you the related links and I strongly recommend that you please uh, go through it because we have provided so many, so much valuable information. The last part of the first cycle of this program will be uh, on Wednesday, 27th of May and uh, with, the, with uh, the presentation of Cyberport. Cyberport is another major player in the Hong Kong startup ecosystem. Please mark the date. 27 of May, uh, because it will be a fundamental appointment of this program due to the offer of enormous interest that Cyberport makes uh, available to international startups in terms of infrastructure and economic support. It is important to understand, and I would like to stress this point, that the various incubation and investment programs that we present in this program, such as today with Brink, are not necessarily alternative to each other. In addition to the opportunity to present your projects to all these players to increase the chances of being selected, obtaining an investment, for example, from Brink, does not preclude the possibility of using the support and facilities of other infrastructures, such as the Science Park or the Cyberport. So please make sure you apply to all this, or at least, you know, whatever, make sure you are present and you are actively um, participating and, and trying to get into these programs that we are presenting. Uh, another point regards the second cycle. I will say this is the first cycle that will end at the end of May with the presentation of Cyberport. The second cycle, which will take place in June, um, the exact dates are not, have not yet been uh, fixed, but uh, will be communicated to you as soon as possible. Uh, this second cycle will be organized in collaboration with the Intesa San Paolo, the Italian bank that uh, dedicates significant efforts and financial resources to support the internationalization of Italian innovative companies. We will present the programs developed specifically to accompany Italian companies to Hong Kong and to the Greater Bay Area, and we will present the opportunities to participate in these programs accompanied by us, by Invest Hong Kong, by the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, and by other partners of the program. I remind you that Invest Hong Kong services are free, and I invite you to contact us as many times as you deem necessary. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us to discuss every aspect related to this program and to any step we would do together 
to see a stronger presence of Italian technology and creativity in this part of the world, which grows at a pace a match in other parts of the world. I look forward to staying in touch with all of you, and I'm now pleased to give the floor to Andrew McCarthy, Head of Marketing of Brink, who will provide us with an overview of Brink. Andrew, you have the floor. Thank you, Stefano. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew McCarthy, the Head of Marketing. Uh, this is Estefania Almeida, the, our Portfolio Manager. Hi. So I'll get right into it. Uh, well, I don't want to take too much of everyone's time, but we'll get into it. We'll go through it quickly, be precise, and then we can uh, open the floor for questions. All right, Brink. So at Brink, we, we believe that the most important challenges will be solved by great entrepreneurs. And that in order for these entrepreneurs to succeed, we, we believe that they need the, the right support. And then we, we believe that we can step in and provide this support. And we like to call all these entrepreneurs game changers. So these game changers are changing the way, fundamentally changing the way how we feel, where we live, what we eat, and how we move. So why now? So with everything going on in the world right now, and everyone's thinking about social responsibility and all, all corporates are, are thinking about this, and we, we all need a change and focus business on creating a more sustainable business. But what we realize that I think a lot of times people want to do social good, but then they don't realize that they need to, they need to create a business that's sustainable too. So we kind of mix the, the two together by creating socially responsible businesses that also make money. So actually a lot of the investments that we have currently, some fit within all these UN SDG goals. Uh, some have five or six associated with them, some just one or two. But as we go forward, we are looking for more of these, these companies to fit with, with the UN goals. And we are actually partnering with the UN in doing workshops in Bahrain so far. And we're looking to do, expand on that partnership. So what kind of accelerated programs we run? So we've, we started five years ago with just our hardware IoT program. And over the past couple of years, we've kind of expanded out that into other areas of manufacturing, food technology, and clean energy. But these programs are kind of like the um, umbrella overseeing many different categories and sectors and industries. And so if any of the industries say like ag tech, med tech, health tech, drones, robotics, um, food supply chain, um, anything that falls within any of these, these are kind of the umbrella names. So if they, any, any of those businesses fall within these categories, we would be very interested in hearing from you. So we have programs all over the world. Uh, we originally started in Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong was hardware IoT was our first program. And we, then we expanded out to the, the other programs, manufacturing, food technology, and clean energy. But over the past three years, we also expanded programs into Bahrain, Poland, India, and Australia. So each of these programs are slightly different. Uh, there's different uh, financial offers, there's different terms, different equity percentages. So like, for example, the one in Poland, it's actually a zero equity percentage, zero equity program. The India program is only for Indian teams, but like, I don't want to get into the details of each site. I think you guys can explore that on our website. But to sum it all up, generally we kind of provide about up to 100,000 US dollars for a range of about eight to 13% equity for, for each business. So what's the schedule look like? Uh, we pretty much run the program twice a year on, uh, it's a three month program twice a year and it's kind of like on a six month cycle. So a good example here is like, so for upcoming, so like let's use the application period of two months. We have our applications opening again in June. So from June, to, mid June to about mid August, we'll have the application period where we'll review and we will receive over a thousand applications for all the different categories. And then we end up, taking about 10% and moving them into our extended due diligence phase, or which we call a pre-acceleration. And here we kind of, it's kind of a feeling out phase whether we're a right fit for you or whether you're a right fit for us. Uh, it's, so it's kind of, a, yeah, we, we decide whether we're, we're good partners for each other. Sometimes it doesn't work out, and, but, but at, by the end of it, we end up selecting under 5% of the teams from the original application batch, and we go into our accelerated program, which runs for three months. So that three month program, let's say, let's use the upcoming one, come, the fall program. So the fall program applications is June to August, September is the pre-acceleration month, then the program will start October, November, December, and then that will start again. And 
we will start the application period from December, January, February, and then re repeat again to next year. And then I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about what steady state is. Uh, it's kind of our ongoing support that even after the program, we provide additional support to the teams that, that once as we're at, as equity partners into the start into these into your startup, we want to see you do well. So we, we remain in contact, we remain helping you along your startup journey. So how do we decide how, which teams enter our program? So these are the three main things, technical feasibility, financial viability, and market desirability. So technical feasibility is kind of like, do you have a prototype? Do, you, do Is it technically feasible to actually make your product? Can, do we believe that can this prototype, this idea can be brought to life? So a lot of the teams that we, we invest are very early stage, like we're pretty much the first money in. So all these are a concept, idea phase, prototypes, working prototypes. And so we have to make that decision whether this is a, a viable business there. So and then going to financial viability, we need to see that you have like the, created a business model that you can actually make profit and, and create a sustainable business. And then going to market desirability, uh, we need to see that, that you're able to, your product is desirable to the market, that people actually want it, your customers want it. Yeah. So why join Brink? So I, I actually did a poll across all the startups that are previously and asked them the, the main reasons why they joined our program. So these are actually responses from our startups and our founders. And the number one reason is always generally funding. Uh, it, it does help. I mean, they, getting 100,000 US dollars is a good kickstart to your business, especially when you're early on. So it's first money in to kind of help you support and kind of to help you develop your idea. But then, then there's the mentorship. So we do, we have mentors across all sectors. So whether you need financial, financial help, engineering help, marketing, we're, we're there to step in in areas that you're weak. And then our network. So. Over the past five years, we've gained a network of investors and partners from around the world. So for hardware IoT, we, we know many of the key players with investors in there. And through technology, we, we now know many of the investors. So we can, as, as a startup that joins our community, we can easily share those contacts and provide those connections for you to help you grow your business. And then the curriculum, uh, we provide a custom curriculum. So a curriculum is catered to your needs. So every startup is different. So every startup needs different support. Uh, so that's why we'll, we'll, after we meet the teams, we realize, okay, maybe they need some more time with finance. finance. Maybe they need some more time uh, raising money. Maybe they need some time learning how to pitch better. We'll provide, we'll probably provide the support wherever they need and like we'll provide that additional support there. And then perks. Uh, we, we've been reached out to by many of the startup tools from around the world. They've given us discounts for free access codes, 50% discounts to many of these tools. And we have about, I think the, the total value of it is about 250,000 US dollars. And we, we share that with all our founders. And then lastly is the ongoing support that I just briefly mentioned in our city state that as an equity partner in your business that we want to see you do well. And if you do well, we do well. So we want to provide that extra support. And one of the things that I always kind of emphasize to all the startups is that when they leave here is that a lot of times founders, uh, I myself being a founder is kind of always too prideful in asking for help and like you believe that you can always do things by yourself. So as a partner here, we, we, we are there and ready to support you. So if you need help in any area, like please do reach out. So we always tell, I always tell teams, please contact us, get, get in touch with us. We'll help you whenever you need because we want to see you do well. And I, I, I'll leave you with one example before I pass it off to Estefania is that I remember a couple of years ago, one of our startups came to us when they said they only had maybe one month left of runway and they, they, they needed to, to raise capital very fast. I mean, ideally they should have told us that six months in advance to give us prior notice, but we went above and beyond. We helped that startup raise that capital. Now they're about to, I guess, manufacture their products. So we, we do help the teams ongo and, and push and help them even post program. So as much as a lot of times, a lot of different programs that you see, it's, it's the, the support ends after you finish the program. But as partners, we, we do kind of support and continue helping you throughout your startup journey. So um, Estefan is going to share a little bit more about our portfolio. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, as you can see from this slide, our portfolio has increased uh, significantly. Uh, now we have around uh, 110 startups. And as you can also see, we're very, um, open to invest in a lot of different verticals. Um, 
The reason is because we can add value on uh, not only on manufacturing, but also we are now also having a focus on uh, food technology and innovation in the food space. And uh, this doesn't necessarily uh, have to have a hardware component. So for example, we are talking about novel ingredients or improvements in the logistics in this very, um, very little transparent industry that is food production or um, uh, novel methods of, uh, of production of a uh, protein, like uh, cellular agriculture instead of growing, uh, instead of consuming meat, uh, having cattle, just use the mother cells to produce uh, meat without the animal. Um, and so on and so forth. So here you can see a little bit of a, of a spectrum of uh, some of the companies where we have invested. So there's a little bit of agriculture tech, uh, a little bit in mobility in smart cities, uh, logistics, health tech. Uh, we are very interested in deep tech companies and uh, we're very comfortable at the early stage. Uh, we try to link our companies with professionals, uh, with the corporates, with mentors, with a vast network to de-risk them, to, uh, to boost them, to give them an unfair advantage, more access to capital, more access to resources. So that, uh, so basically, uh, yeah, boost our company so that we have a win-win relationship, all our strategic help uh, geared towards the growth of our companies. Now, uh, I will um, go over a couple uh, case studies and we can culminate hearing from one of our, um, one of the companies where we invested. Uh, Simone will share um, uh, his, his experience and a little bit more about his startup. And uh, yeah, you'll hear more from him. So basically, um, the first company that I, that I wanted to share a little bit about is Frontier Bio. Frontier Bio is a company uh, based in the United States. So also we invest anywhere in the world. We don't have a geographical limitation. We try to be as opportunistic as we can where, where there are good fundamentals and good companies with a, with a good um, solution to a massive problem that needs to be addressed. So this company is doing a, bio, a bioprinter. A uh, bioprinter is basically uh, capable of printing live tissue, so bone, cartilage, skin, and uh, this technology basically uh, is used for drug testing. Uh, for example, it has a lot of other uh, usages, and the advantage of this uh, little printer is that it basically has a zero um, uh, cell death. It's, it has the highest survival rates that are available in the market, Normally, uh, the typical techniques have a, um, a kill 60% of the cells. You can see a little uh, uh, on, the, on the images, uh, some of the examples. One of, this, uh, one of the examples is basically a printed human blood vessel that the Mayo Clinic was, uh, was using, so top tier players. This team we have supported with fundraising a lot. They, 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 they fundraised almost a million US dollars from top tier investors. Some of them were our introduction, some of them uh, we, uh, we developed a good relationship with through the help that we provide um, to our startups. We can be really as hands-on as the startups invite us to be. We try to be an investor, but uh, we really like vision-driven founders that make their own decisions, that have their own efforts, their own uh, objectives. Um, uh, another one of our companies, this one is in food tech and is specifically geared towards the logistics. It's a pure software company. Uh, well, almost pure software, uh, but it's a pure AI platform. So artificial intelligence platform that helps to analyze ingredients, nutrients, the texture of food production, and uh, basically add a lot of traceability to the entire food manufacture food production process. Um, this company has grown uh, radically. They have a uh, uh, 20 million data points. Basically, uh, it enables uh, food producers to uh, to have a, a very organized R&D, a very organized process of how they're producing their end, end products. Now they have 43 users. It doesn't seem like a lot, but actually, these are um, it, it's a B2B company. 
So for the free users, it's corporates, sometimes of the size of Walmart and the Danone. So uh, really, it, it's a very interesting company that we're also supporting in fundraise, uh, to fundraise, and they have already raised more than half of their current round, uh, based in the United States as well, but it has a lot of expansion capability. Uh, this company is in uh, health tech. Uh, as you can see, it's a little device that goes under the, uh, well, in, in, in your thoracic uh, uh, cage, just uh, uh, under uh, uh, on your ribs to measure your lung um, uh, base response. It's, a, it, 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 it's, as you can see on the value proposition, it says advanced lung sound monitoring. So it's uh, meant to be predictive. It's meant to help uh, um, uh, patients uh, to reduce their risk of, uh, of rehospitalization. It helps um, any, any, any patient with a respiratory uh, disease. It gathers a lot of data. And it's, it's a hardware solution with a, with a software component that is very um, strong. So basically, it, it, it monitors the patient's lung health in real time and gathers a lot of data. So this, they have, a, they have achieved high levels of accuracy for, uh, for their, using their detection algorithms. So it's 95% um, uh, precise and it has, gone all, it has gone through all the clinical studies uh, and FDA approvals. They have raised a significant amount of money and they're working with the best hospitals in the world to refine their, uh, their offer through uh, uh, clinical trials. A very interesting uh, company that is also thriving through this crisis as they support uh, uh, patients that, are, that have lung uh, problems. Uh, they're generating revenue and we have, at, to them, we have supported in manufacturing, in connecting, and uh, we have given a lot of strategic help. Um, this company I'm very fond of. It's an Italian company, uh, sorry, a Portuguese company, uh, well, Brazilian, um, and it has a lot of possibilities for expansion. It is already working in Italy uh, and with some top tier um, textile, uh, textile uh, giants. Basically, Galley is uh, growing cotton uh, in the lab. So uh, out of the mother cells of the, of the cotton, so it has the same quality or better quality than Egyptian cotton. It can, it, it can grow 10 times faster. Uh, it uses, it is not uh, reliant on land, so uh, it basically saves a lot of land space. Uh, does not use pesticides, it is cleaner, it has less emission, less water usage. Uh, it's basically a clean way of producing, producing cotton. And what they produce in the end is the yarn that is ready to enter into the textile uh, industry a very wasteful industry, so it is a massive um, solution. And uh, they're doing quite well. As I said, they're entering the, uh, the, um, the Italian market uh, through some uh, excellent clients and uh, with, um, uh, yeah, uh, also in the, in the United States and increasing their manufacturing capacity. Uh, this is one of our robotics companies, uh, Botsync. Basically, right now, they're, they're, um, you can see the little robots. They're uh, autonomous, and they're meant to um, navigate areas that are uh, 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 difficult access, that are difficult to navigate. Right now, they are, they are, they're focusing on ins inspection and, uh, and automation of warehouses. Of course, this is also uh, an area that is thriving in this crisis, uh, adding more efficiencies with less people, saving a lot of costs. And uh, their robots right now uh, are also using deep learning. And, uh, and on top of this, the company is adding a lot of training courses uh, for people in academia, in, uh, for robotics professionals, for uh, people in, 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 in the industry so they can learn more about robotiz robotization. Uh, they um, are working, they actually have three robots already in the market. They are working with the uh, top tier players like Schneider Electric and Bolloré. Schneider Electric, we have a very good relationship with. We actually, um, uh, they, uh, they chose some companies from Brink to invest and to hold a, a proof of concepts 
with and uh, it so far it's going very well uh, with some of the of uh, the chosen companies in industrial IoT. And this company has also uh, been very successful at fundraising thanks to our help. Um, this uh, just to I'll be quite quick so to give uh, more time to Simone to share. Uh, but this is a cellular agriculture company as well. But they're basically producing a feed a, a fish uh, mop, so the mouth of the fish uh, that is rich in collagen. So they can actually produce this uh, this um, part of the fish without growing the fish, so in a very clean manner, in a sterile environment, in a lab, and not only for consumption, uh, actually collagen is very consumed in China, so it is a very, very large market for food consumption, but also as an ingredient uh, for in the cosmetics industry. Uh, this collagen-rich part of the fish can, is, is constantly used as an ingredient uh, in, in the cosmetics industry. So they're basically providing for a better uh, solution, a better uh, source of, a, of, of this clean ingredient without actually all the aquaculture, all the, uh, that is sometimes quite aggressive, that sometimes has a lot of uh, antibiotics. It's not necessarily a very clean process. So there, it's adding efficiencies to, uh, to uh, uh, not only the food uh, industry, but also the cosmetics industry. Uh, and they have a lot of traction and they have patented their, their, their method from A to Z and enabling them to scale very fast. Uh, now, um, Coor is one of our portfolio companies. I, would, uh, I, I don't want to uh, say too much about it. I would love for Simone to share uh, all about his company. So I'll, I'll leave him to speak. Thanks, Estefania. So hello, everyone. I'm Simone Gashara and I'm the CEO founder of Coor. Uh, we are building uh, advanced uh, hardware for uh, workers on the field, so blue collars. Basically, our goal is to put electronics on their body to boost their performance and their safety on the field. Um, and we have been part of uh, Brink Accelerator in Hong Kong, uh, the hardware and IoT accelerator, uh, more than a year ago. Uh, they selected us uh, because eventually they believed uh, in the market and right now is actually uh, true which uh, more than a year ago wasn't true that almost any industrial company is investing in building this kind of technologies to boost uh, the safety of workers as much as possible uh, actually uh, there is even DuPont that is one of the most important uh, company in the world for the equipment for workers that has actually coined the term safety tech uh, as a new brand of the you know safety market specifically specifically for industrial workers and for us brink has been uh, very very valuable uh, actually we have even been uh, through brink in cyberport one of the program that stefano mentioned to you at the beginning and uh, brink added us great value in our case on the hardware uh, perspective for example in manufacturing but even on strategy on fundraising techniques uh, so it has been very useful especially in italy you're not used to see uh, you know so much uh, international value international ex expertise uh, sometime um, at least i've not seen it uh, very much in the hardware perspective but uh, anyway, our, our experience has been very good. We have been to Shenzhen. We have seen the actual places, the factories where, you know, electronics is built. Uh, so it's like you're seeing how things really works uh, on a top tier perspective. Um, and that's actually very, very important because on the manufacturing perspective, uh, uh, let, let's say that the quality of the product actually it's a result uh, of the quality of the manufacturing piece uh, and this is especially important for Italy because we are very much used to you know prototyping and very small batches uh, so we are more about the handcraft of things uh, so even seeing what is about uh, to build you know a ton of product uh, big volumes, uh, all of them must be at the same quality level. Uh, 
that's 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 something that maybe it's not so easy to see, especially in Italy. Uh, so for us, this is uh, true as a tech um, advantage that we have seen uh, through Brink. Uh, but again, in general, um, having you know this expertise, having access to expertise in international funding and uh, international venture capitals. Uh, it's something that for sure Italy uh, has a need, I would say. Uh, so if you have any question, I would be happy to respond to any question. But I, I believe Brink can add a lot of value here, uh, especially in Italy. Thank you, Simone. Uh, before we kind of open it up for questions from everybody, I want to show you guys that we, we actually recently did, created a new brand video that I want to share it to kind of uh, motivate you guys a little bit. It starts with an idea. You're onto something. A truly meaningful solution for a problem facing our society. So you persevere. You push forward. Then one day, you're ready to make your pitch. This is your dream your chance to make an impact, your positive change in the world. You talk to us. We're looking for solutions. We're inspired by your idea. We see the potential for impact. We act on it. We give advice and guidance, business and technology insights, expert mentorship, a sense of community, and a movement that's greater than all of us. We connect you with investors and partners that see the benefit beyond the spreadsheet. Suddenly, opportunities that were out of reach are now within your grasp. And because we see the world through your eyes, we're with you every step of the way creating a real, sustainable business that connects profit with purpose, financial return with value for society. The result might just change the world. Brink. Empowering Game Changers. I hope that's motivated you all to apply. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, applications are open in the, in June and they'll be open until about mid-August. Um, we are we are looking for for new teams to invest in, and we'll be probably investing into about I think about around 30, 30 new teams. Thank you all for your time, and if, if, uh, let's open up the, the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Thank you, Stefania. And thank you, Simone. Very, very interesting. I was fascinated, I must say. You know, I'm no Brink. Of course, I'm familiar with the name for years, but I mean, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't have such an opportunity to get into, you know, into depth, you know, uh, to understand what you're actually doing. And thank you for sharing this. And thank you, Simone, for sharing your experience. You know, uh, Simone, what you were saying is, a kind of summary of what I keep saying to everybody, but what I'm saying is theory. What you're saying is practice, right? Practical things, practical experience. When I say go to Hong Kong because, and at least there's so many advantages, there's so many attractions, but basically what people should understand, you are in Hong Kong in a very, in an ideal climate, let's say business climate, but you just jump on a taxi and get to Shenzhen to, to watch your uh, components being made or your whatever hardware or partnership and, and whatever, and you jump on a taxi, go to the bank and get the money, or you go to the, you know. And the other thing that I, I said in the beginning, uh, all these programs, all these facilities, infrastructure that we are presenting are not alternative to each other, right? And, and even Andrew repeated that. Uh, get and Simone as well, right? I mean, you know, getting a, an investment from Brain, getting into their incubation program does not prevent at all for you to get into an, a program of, of Science Park or, or Cyberport. The two things can be combined and they both combine to bring to success. Uh, getting a partner like, uh, like Brink into your company, uh, Brink is your shareholder. I mean, you know, for them, they will use all their 
strength, their experience, their support, their, their whatever they have to make your project a success in Asia and in the world. So this is the point I wanted to repeat to make sure that it's very well understood by everybody. And uh, I would uh, ask please Andrew and Stefania to go through the Q&As and, and uh, we have a few questions in the chat and a few in the Q&As. Uh, would you please uh, see if you can address some of them, of those? Certainly. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the first question that I see is, is from Gregory. Well, uh, he says, uh, who is the expert person uh, evaluating? So, yeah, this is a very good question. So basically, uh, of course, we have a very, very large funnel uh, that is composed of our uh, inbound and outbound, so referral channels, our participation in the ecosystem, so easily, very fast, we get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of applications. So uh, we have an internal team that um, analyzes all of these applications and uh, starts selecting uh, the teams based on, uh, well, on quality that is, uh, uh, it's a lot of different criteria. Um, um, we're very, uh, very interested in the early stage. So um, we're very, very um, open to companies that still, for example, are not ready for manufacturing it at a, uh, we, we see where we can add value and then we're looking for disruptive uh, solutions um, for very pressing problems. Uh, clear market fits and uh, and uh, really excellent teams. But let's say that after uh, this first selection is made by our internal team, we hold an investment committee. So this investment committee is composed of uh, the uh, team uh, team members from Brink that have different levels of expertise, uh, be it technical. Um, uh, an expertise in a certain, uh, in like for example, in marketing, in uh, in manufacturing, in logistics, in uh, finance. Uh, so we try to uh, have a, a complete team that can cover some uh, uh, a well-rounded analysis of the companies that go through the investment committee, and we also invite experts and mentors. And the reason why we do this is uh, quite apparent. Oftentimes, if it's a very disrupting technology, we need to bring a uh, some experts to the table that can understand and can give us an assessment about a specific technology, how solid it, it is in reality. Uh, the external mentors and us uh, hold uh, uh, meetings with, uh, with the, the, uh, the teams that are in the investment committee. And the, the due diligence process is fairly long. It lasts uh, around two to three weeks. Uh, and we also go deeper into the, the um, the material that is submitted and we bring a lot of a uh, well we ask basically uh, questions that allow us to make a proper assessment so it's several people uh some of it uh, in how some 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 of us in house some uh, externals of our ever-growing network really we have experts in artificial intelligence experts in food technology food scientists um etc cetera, etc cetera. do you want to add something yeah, that's a perfect answer <laughs> And then I think Gregory also asked a question about how the clean condition they print in plasma. I believe that's a question related to one of our teams for Frontier Bio. I don't think they print in plasma, I believe, right? I don't know. Um, uh, they, they, they have a medium, uh, but uh, yeah, this uh, uh, the, the exact medium of where the, where the, the, um, the live tissue is printed, it's not plasma, uh, but uh, I I mean, I, I would need to check with the, uh, how, how sensitive this, this, this information is with the founder. If you're particularly curious about this team, uh, we can definitely have a, maybe have a longer chat after this and happy to connect you really to some of our teams. I, uh, we're really happy to extend our network. Um, yeah. yeah. And then I'm not sure about the how mm -hmm. conditions. I think yeah, maybe you're referring to our accelerator program, the conditions. Uh, I think it, it's pretty straightforward. I think it's uh, depending on which program you apply for. For the hardware IT, let's use as an example, it's about uh, it's 100,000 US dollars for eight to 13 percent equity. We require the teams to be in Hong Kong for one month of the program. The other two months can be done 
overseas, you can be done in Italy at home. And then the, we require the teams to also pay a program fee of 30,000 US dollars. And it's pretty standard across many other accelerator programs is how we, we run our business. Yeah. Uh, I guess if I can add something, uh, go a little bit in, into greater detail. Uh, we uh, um, have partnered with, a, in, in, in Hong Kong, we've partnered with a, with a fund, a, a very large uh, fund uh, backed by, well, it's superannuation. Basically, superannuation is the equivalent of a pension fund in the United States. So basically, a very, very liquid fund. It's called the ITGN. Um, they have a lot of later stage funds, but they have delegated the, um, uh, the early stage to us. So they rely entirely uh, on our investment committee, our, our ability to understand the early stage, to de-risk, and they deploy capital uh, uh, on the companies that we select. Uh, so we also have this partner and co-investor that can provide capital. Uh, and who has a lot of follow on investment capabilities, meaning that uh, on the next rounds of fundraising, they can reinvest and reinvest and reinvest. So, uh, of course, this is a, a very good partner that, uh, that we can count on that has been able to provide a lot of liquidity for teams beyond the program. Uh, so, yeah. Perfect. Uh, next question from Marco. Do you want us to open a new co in Hong Kong? If yes, do we have to recruit any staff? If yes, at which stage and how many resources we have to hire? So actually we don't require uh, you to register your business in Hong Kong. We recommend you to register your business in Hong Kong because once you re uh, register your business in Hong Kong, you get the, the many tax advantages, you get access to say other grants like Cyberport and Science Park that we keep repeating. So, but if, for you to just apply to join us at first, you, you do not, it's not required, but we, we recommend it. Yeah, uh, Hong Kong is a jurisdiction that we really like, of course, because it has uh, rule of law, uh, basically uh, a very clean uh, law that, that is very efficient, uh, that is very fast, uh, that is um, transparent, that will protect your intellectual property if you have a Hong Kong uh, topco with the intellectual property sitting there. Uh, that is extremely efficient in case of arbitration, if, in case of litigation. If it's, it's just a, a very nice jurisdiction that also investors tend to really like uh, because of all the ease that it offers uh, to investors. So it also can open um, a lot of uh, doors for financing sources. Uh, a lot of investors, not only in Asia, also in other areas of the world are quite uh, familiar with Hong Kong, like it as a jurisdiction, so it's easier to uh, raise funds uh, having a, a Hong Kong entity. So it's not a, as, as Andrew said, it's not a limitation. We it, we recommend it if you if you're thinking still of a of a registering a company, you can have access to a lot of governmental help, uh, and uh, overall it's it's a a very healthy place to do business at. It's easy to transact with China as well. Uh, you can transact with a with a another jurisdiction as well, but it's uh, close to um, uh, a lot of vendors in China know it, etc. So do you do transact? Cool. All right. Next question. Uh, we have two Chinese investors. Oh, question from Enos. So we have two Chinese investors in the company, and we are analyzing the Chinese market. Very interesting for us. But we need a partner to help us develop on the vast Chinese market. For you, for you, it represents an added value to already have two Chinese investors to be evaluated to enter the brink, the, the ecosystem brink. So I think this question is a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not something that we particularly specialize in to kind of help startups enter the Chinese market. Um, it's kind of a case to case basis how we have partners like, we have office in Guangzhou and our Guangzhou office is connected with the Guangzhou government helping us. We're, they're trying to attract uh, startups into Guangzhou and, and enter the chi Chinese market. But from our Hong Kong and globally, we kind of we also help startups and corporates. If you go on our website, we have a section called services, and that's open to startups and corporates that we help people with their manufacturing in China. So we have a whole other side of the business where we we support with any kind of manufacturing need. We we are the middleman in between the, us be, between the factory and you. So depending on your needs and what you need specifically, and like maybe if you're part of the ecosystem then we can introduce you to the players if you apply so it really depends on it's kind of case to case to say how we can add more value to to helping you grow in china uh, in any case if you have investors before uh it is 
a validation as well. So it, it, it does bring more force to, uh, uh, to your entire, uh, well, how we will see the company. Uh, if you have sophisticated investors that are capable of valuing you, that can understand your tech, it's even better. Uh, but yeah, uh, not, we don't have a particular uh, uh, inclination towards uh, having you know, local investors. It, it could potentially bring a lot of value, I guess on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next question from Marco. Uh, do you require to get any shares of our Italian startup? If yes, any idea how many six shares? Um, we do have a, um, an equity alignment. So yes, shares, because our help is really for the long run. We have very long horizons on average um, seven to 15 years until there's a natural uh, liquidity moment. So we don't force liquidity moments at all, but we have a, um, we're very long-term investors. How many shares really depends. Uh, it depends on, on your valuation and how, uh, where you're sitting. So basically we invest from valuations that are from 1 million to 5 million US dollars. And our percentages are also a range. So it really depends. They're, they will be lower when the valuations are higher and higher when the valuations are lower, but maybe uh, if we're talking about the lowest range of valuations at the very early stage, uh, in co-investment with our partner fund Artesian, we would take from eight to 13%. Uh, yeah, but for the, on the lower range of, of valuations, uh, higher a little less, but open to discussion actually, it really depends on, on, on your rounds, our capital needs, et cetera. All right. Uh, this is a comment that Gregory asked for our presentation to send to Stefano that we will, we will send our presentation and video and over and uh, Stefano will share with you all. Uh, next. I'm seeing many questions asking the Q&A because we have to right? the Q&A <laughs> and chat. It's a bit confusing. Maybe we could, uh, could you please uh, copy and paste in the chat so we concentrate all the questions in one place only, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. There's a lot. I don't know. I think that's not. I think that's all the questions actually. Oh, here's another. Oh, oh there's more questions. There's yeah. one asking uh, whether does it happen that companies you help come uh, uh, up working together? I mean, building a network among them could even empower them and more and add value to the whole. So uh, I suppose yes, right? I mean, synergies and and cooperation between among companies that already incubated or, or part of your program? Yeah, uh, so uh, we do uh, try to build some platforms where all the founders can interact together. Uh, we call the a monthly founder hour that is uh, for uh, our, our, our founders to interact with each other, uh, where they share their own experiences. Sometimes they ask um, for help from the other founders. Uh, it's really a very collaborative uh, platform. And um, we also have our external um, network, right? So mentors, corporates, et cetera. Uh, so founders do interact a lot with each other. They help each other a lot. It has already happened actually that some uh, collaborate together. So I, I can give you an example, two drone companies uh, with different solutions decided to join forces and created a, um, a, a bit of a, of a mixed uh, um, solution that enhanced both of the businesses. So uh, it, it, sometimes it really makes sense. And this is something that we really want to foster. Uh, it's a force in numbers, right? Yeah, yeah thank you. I think uh, there is one more question. Alessandro is asking, uh, he doesn't understand well, uh, what is the percentage of equity you would uh, request or register in, in for the $100,000? If I understand correctly, it depends on the value of the company. That's basically the, the answer. There's no a single question. If you are a company worth billions, I mean, you know, the 100,000 would be a tiny percentage, right? If it is yeah. just a startup, 100,000, maybe 50%. So it's really, there's no standard reply, but just, uh, just apply and then discuss. But one question I have, who would be both of you uh, or uh, who, I mean, for any clarification after this webinar, people should get in touch with us, of course, because we will help them uh, get in touch with you. But I mean, they may get in touch with you directly. It would be Stefania or Andrew or both, or would you perhaps clarify? 
Yeah, you can get in touch with both of us. Uh, we're happy to answer any question. I mean, we have startups reaching out to us every day and like whether it's on our website chat bot, whether it's on our emails, like uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Yeah. And I have a question for Simone. Simone, can you, I was saying before, think of yourself two years ago. You have been uh, with Brink for one year. Think of yourself uh, two years ago. Um, how would you, how did you get in touch with Brink? What kind of difficulties? Uh, you know, what, yeah. share a bit of your practical experience, let's say. Yeah, so as you know, in Italy is uh, very tough in general. Uh, you don't have many investors, so it's a very little market at the moment, but it's growing. So that's a good thing for us, especially uh, we found out about Brink via F. Uh, 6s.com that is a very important uh, website um, that is uh, I, I think is still what Brink uses for applications right okay uh, so it's a platform very important platform uh, I where where we saw about them then we studied them and it, it has been very very interesting it was already very interesting they had uh, maybe at least half of the programs they have now uh, but it was very, very interesting for us. Um, and actually, I like uh, especially the, um, uh, let, let's say, the modality, the, 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 the characteristics of the product, program, because having two months uh, in remote and then the last month in, let's say, locally, it has been very, very useful and very, very helpful uh, because usually you don't need uh, too much time uh, in a certain place where a lot of accelerators ask you to maybe relocate for three months, six months somewhere. Uh, so it's actually, it, it has been very, very useful to start to know each other uh, for a little bit. Um, so yeah, it has been, start. let's say thinking about before entering Brink, uh, really you face the challenges that Italy faces uh, if you are in Italy um, and yeah and practically speaking uh, as you see I like to be very practical uh, so practically speaking uh, really the remote um, the remote thing has been very very helpful because we we wanted to to let's say know more uh, about all the specifics, uh, maybe even before deciding, you know, to move for a month uh, in Hong Kong. Um, but but is it, that has been very very important. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Simone. Do you mind if we share your details in case any companies would like to get in touch with you to ask yeah, questions, maybe in Italian or something? Yeah, yeah, you can find me, anyone can find me easily on LinkedIn or via email. On LinkedIn, if you type my name, you find me immediately. Or if you want to write me via email, is my name at qwork.com. Uh, so it's very, very, yeah, uh, is very, very easy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, anyway, get in touch with us and we will share your contact as, uh, as uh, any other. So write me, write me, it's not a problem. Or again, add me on LinkedIn if you want. It's not a problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Andrew, Stefania, any other question you'd like to address or else? I mean, there's a lot of questions I realized. <laughs> I, I think I, 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 re I only opened up the, the Zoom webinar chat and I, the, the, I didn't know there was a QA and a section here. And the Q&A section is quite a few questions. So I'll see if I can just quickly just go through them really quickly for you. Uh, just give quick answers. Uh, so. What about fashion tech? We have, we have, we have accepted several fashion tech startups. Uh, I, I do think they have some sort of hardware IoT components. Um, so space application. Uh, the Spring Programmer, it's your day. So we, we generally look at startups at the early stage, you know, pre-seed to seed round. So Series A maybe a little bit later, but we are looking to raise a fund and there's we, we have a partner fund called Arkley Brink for that as for later stage teams and that could be of interest for you as a as a European startup so so definitely could be, provide that uh, contact for you how many applications do you get we generally get about a, a thousand applications uh, we usually accept about 30 30 startups per batch um, So 
So one person is asking about uh, creating a business plan. And one of the business plans is, uh, I think there's a lot, many tools online that you can create a business plan. And then, I mean, I'll ha I can happily like su support and provide advice. So if you, Marco, if you can, you can send me an email. I can give you advice on, on your business plan if you need, need help with that. Um, um, usually uh, for business plan, uh, if you, if you uh, uh, create a deck, really it, it, it covers everything that should be on a business plan. There's a lot of resources on the, uh, that you can find online. Andrew can send you some, uh, some more material uh, about what is typically uh, the most useful information, the typical topics that you need to address. And if you do it in a PowerPoint uh, form, this is normally very accepted by, by investors. Uh, rather than um, the, it, it kind of replaces the the old uh, business plan that was very wordy with a with a deck. Uh, it, it it does the work. Perfect. So, uh, do you use convertible notes or similar financial tools? Uh, yeah. Hi, Renato. Uh, yes, we do uh, use convertible notes, and we also do safe rounds. We really like to do price rounds uh, because uh, we can support you a lot in the in going through of the what involves uh, doing a price round, the governance, the, the typical resolutions, the typical composition of boards, what is friendly for founders, etc. We can definitely accompany uh, accompany you through that, but we're very open to signing safes and convertibles. And I think the last question I think we, we need to address was somebody somebody was asking about. Are you looking for startups or investors or can investors get involved and get equity of our startup and invest too? Uh, we are open to hearing from different investors. If Antonio, if you're interested in investing, please do reach out to Estefania and then maybe we can share our portfolio and share more information. Yeah, always looking for, uh, for high quality investors, for high quality startups. We are happy to co-invest. We have done it in the past. We continue to do it. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that pretty much answers most of the questions. If, I mean, if there's any other questions, please do reach out to Estefania or me via, via email, and we're, we're, we're always here to help. I think, uh, yes, you said it. Let's please, please continue asking questions. We love them. You know, the more questions you ask, the more we have opportunities to stay in touch and, and to bring you to Hong Kong, to bring to, to amazing facilities like, like uh, Brink. And, uh, and uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Estefania. Thank you all for participating but thank you for supporting Hong Kong and for helping us uh, you know opening these great opportunities to uh, Italian companies thank you all and uh, stay in touch thank you thank Bye -bye. you very much thank you thank you everybody for your time uh, we really look forward to seeing more Italian applications there's so much talent that we want to see <laughs>